As we saw in the previous unit, traditional probability theory and classical information theory attempt to quantify some properties related to randomness by asking how many bits are needed to encode or communicate a sequence or message. Algorithmic information theory, or the theory of algorithmic complexity, is, however, of a very different nature than classical information. The motivation behind algorithmic complexity is the question of what does it mean for an object to be truly random for the following properties in the broadest and most general terms. Unpredictability, that is, the impossibility to predict an outcome or an object. Incompressibility, that is, that one cannot describe something random in a simple or short fashion. And typicality, that is, that a random event does not have anything particularly special. A sequence of coin tosses, for example, would be called typical if it looks unbiased, that is, random. But if it comes out with only tails every time, then it would look atypical, compressible and highly predictable. In contrast to traditional statistics and classical information theory, Algorithmic information theory avoids probability distributions and provides a very different and, in a fundamental way, a general open approach to randomness by focus, co focusing on the properties of data that can be modeled by computer programs. So something random will be something that no computer program shorter than, shorter than the data can model or reproduce. So we have arrived to one of the main concepts in this course, that is the concept of algorithmic complexity. Defined by Solomonov, Kolmogorov, Chaitin and Levin, the so-called program size complexity, also known as algorithmic complexity or Kolmogorov complexity, is a measure that quantifies algorithmic randomness. A type of randomness is strictly stronger than statistical randomness. Formally, the algorithmic complexity that we will denote by k of a string s is the length of the shortest computer program p running on a universal Turing machine t that generates the string as output and halts. The largest or smallest difference between the original length and the compressed length, that is the size of the Turing machine generating the string, determines the complexity of the string. So a string is set, set to be random, algorithmically random, if its um, shortest computer program, the length of the shortest computer, computer program P, running on T produces S, is not very different to the length of the string itself. And all is measured in bits, both the sequence and the Turing machine. However, K is said to be uncomputable because of the halting problem, given that one cannot always find the shortest programs in finite time, because one would have to run every computer program for which we may have to wait forever if they never halt. In practice, one uses more pragmatic approaches such as lossless compression algorithms. Lossless here means that there is no loss of information after compressing and the compression retrieves exactly the same original object. The compressed version of an object is an upper bound of its algorithmic complexity. That means that the actual algorithmic complexity of the string cannot be greater than its compressed length, and thus finding a short representation of an object by compressing it is a sufficient test for non-randomness. For finite strings, it is sufficient to calculate the length in bits of the compressed version and compare it to the original string length. This function roughly encodes a string in binary. For example, a non-random binary string will be highly compressible, as it can be seen. And a pseudo-random sequence would be hard to compress. Its compressed length in binary is not shorter than its uncompressed length. The problem is, of course, the cases in which not no compressed version is found. Because k is not computable, we cannot guarantee that the lack of a compressed version of an object means that no such object is, exists. And so not much can be said about it. So because of this limitation, in general, 
it is more important and highly more informative to find that something is compressible than that something is not. As a generalization for ever-growing sequences, a sequence S can be said to be algorithmic random if all its initial segments are not compressible by more than a constant. So eventually after a while, the growing sequence will be mostly uncompressible from some length on. That can be written as follows. This means, for example, that unlike for random strings, for non-random strings such as an alternating 0 and 1, 2000 of, uh, times, one can find a constant that makes all initial segments to have low algorithmic complexity from one point on. From the initial segment number 80 on, for example, for this case, all compressed versions are shorter than the length of the initial segments themselves. Now, by adding the constant 80, all compressed initial segments are shorter than the initial segments. And 176 bit is an upper bound of the algorithmic complexity for this sequence. For a random sequence, no such constant can be found. Here is illustrated with a pseudo-random string of 2000 bits. The com Kolmogorov complexity characterization conveys the intuition that a random sequence is not compressible. So you can see how algorithmic information theory draws heavily from the theory of computation as founded by Alan Turing by looking at the computer programs behind, behind the data or producing the data. Algorithmic complexity can help to formulate and tackle questions that traditional tools from information theory are poorly equipped to deal with. For example, this string may look random when viewed from the perspective of Shannon entropy, but the sequence is simply generated by starting with zero and then successively appending the Boolean complement to the sequence. That is one where there is a zero and zero where there is a one. Another look at the way this string is generated may reveal the process. You start from zero, then the Boolean complement of zero is one. You end up with the sequence zero one. Then you take the Boolean complement of zero one, which is one zero and append it to the original sequence. Then you have zero one one zero and so on. The resulting infinite sequence is called the two Morse sequence after their inventors. Despite the potential infinite length of this sequence, the generating mechanism is a very short computer program of fixed length that can generate every bit, analogous to the short description we just gave in plain English. Such a computer program, however, would never be taken into consideration by Shannon Entropy, which would assign it a very large value because the number of different substrings keeps growing in spite of the fact that the generating program remains of the same small size. Shannon entropy and algorithmic complexity use and work with the same units, bits, but information is interpreted in very different ways. For example, algorithmic complexity considers individual objects independent of any probability distribution. So in another example, if you don't know the possible deterministic source of a sequence and assume a uniform distribution, different initial segments of a deterministic sequence such as the Fibonacci sequence may have different entropy values. And it is the case. This is because the larger the numbers, more bits are required to encode them in binary. However, for algorithmic complexity, the size of the generating program remains exactly the same. This means that the Fibonacci sequence has a low and constant algorithmic complexity and so for any segment of the Fibonacci sequence there is this exactly the same algorithmic complexity. This example reveals that this is a great difference between these two measures. So two messages can have different entropy yet they can have the same algorithmic complexity. So, what are the most salient properties of algorithmic complexity? The central idea behind algorithmic complexity is that a sequence of bits is random if there is no computer program whose length in bits is shorter than the sequence itself. 
This basically means that random sequences are those that cannot be compressed. By a simple combinatorial argument, one can see that almost all strings are random. That is, the shortest program producing the output rarely has a much shorter representation than the length of the string itself. For instance, strings of size 20 bits are this many, and strings that can be encoded in less than 20 bits are this many. That is, at least one string cannot be compressed at all. But programs of less than 19 bits are significantly fewer. So it turns out that half of the original strings are compressible by just one bit. And half of the half of the original strings are compressible only by two bits. And so on. So most strings are close to the maximal complexity or maximal randomness because they are not compressible but for a few bits. That means that one cannot pair all end length binary strings with binary programs of much shorter length because there's simply enough short programs to encode all strings in shorter strings, even under optimal circumstances. Another important property of algorithmic complexity is also commonly seen as its greatest burden. That is, its uncomputable nature. A function is uncomputable if there is no Turing machine that is guaranteed to produce an output for its inputs. Or in other words, if the machine computing the function doesn't always hold for a number of inputs. For Kolmogorov complexity, that means that the function s to ks, that is given a string to calculate the algorithmic complexity of the string, has no effective procedure or Turing machine that can compute it. That is, there is no general function that, given a specific string, can generate the, always the shortest computer program that produces that string. This uncomputability of the function s to ks is, however, also the source of its greatest strength. Contrary to the common belief that the greatest burden or drawback of k is its uncomputability, it is its own computability that provides k with its greatest power. Algorithmic information theory proves that no computable measure will be up to the task in finding all possible regularities among all possible infinite sequences, or even finite sequences. This, this is because there is an uncountable number of possible regularities even in all possible finite sequences or strings while there is only a countable number of possible Turing machines or computer programs. So there are not enough of them to spot every possible regularity, and that means that a function up to the task has to be uncomputable. It is more precise and appropriate to refer to the uncomputability of the function s to ks as semi-computable, because one can actually approximate the algorithmic complexity of S from above. That is, one can calculate the upper bounds of K. One traditional way to calculate upper bounds on K is, as we said, with the use of lossless compression algorithms. A trivial upper bound of, on K for any string S is simply the program print S. If a string S does not allow any other shorter program than print S, then S can be said to be uncompressible or algorithmic random. A proof of the uncomputability of k is sometimes explained using the very paradox. Popular lossless compression algorithms such as LEMPFCIF and COMPRESS behind formats such as ZIP are regularly used to estimate algorithmic complexity. As we said before, the usefulness of lossless compression algorithms as a method for approximating algorithmic complexity derives from the fact that compression is a sufficient test for non-randomness. For example, the difference in length between the compressed and uncompressed forms of the output of cellular automata is an approximation of their algorithmic complexity. For most cases, the length of the compressed forms levels off, indicating that the cellular automata output is repetitive and can easily be described. 
However, in cases like rules 30, 45, 110, and 73, the length of the compressed form grows rapidly, corresponding to the apparent randomness and lack of structure in the display. However, at the same time, according to algorithmic complexity, the shortest description of an unfolding object is the rule from which it evolves. So the algorithmic complexity of all the 256 elementary cellular automata is not greater than only about 8 bits plus the length of the cellular automaton function encoded in bits. That does not mean that all these rules are equally, uh, equally algorithmic random or complex because it can easily be seen how rule 0, for example, that evolves into all blank cells can actually be encoded in less than 8 bits plus the length of the function cellular automaton and is thus very likely to be less algorithmic complex than, say, rule 30. Here is a table of elementary cellular automata rules sorted from highest compressibility and thus lo lowest estimated algorithmic complexity by using lossless compression algorithm, in this case compress. And it goes from highest compressibility to lowest compressibility or highest estimated algorithmic complexity.